It's not every day that a Canadian television show makes headlines around the world. Little Mosque on the Prairie. Is that going too far? But it's not every day that a show comes along like Little Mosque on the Prairie, the first television series to find the funny side of being Muslim in a post 9-11 world. At a time when television was doing a pretty good job of reinforcing Muslim stereotypes, Little Mosque was breaking them. While I was in Egypt doing my Islamic studies, I found my true calling. Explosives? Yeah, explosives. The show about a big city lawyer who leaves Toronto to lead a mosque in the town of Mercy, Saskatchewan. I'm the new imam. It's like a priest or a rabbi, only browner. <laughs> it's your classic fish out of water story, but the idea of taking a gentle, light-hearted look at religion, and specifically Islam, was uncharted territory for North American TV. Don't you think that's a little offensive? <laughs> it is totally offensive. And more than two million Canadians tuned in for the premiere in 2007. Since then, Little Mosque has been picked up in more than 80 countries worldwide and sparked an important conversation about the perception of Islam in popular culture. We have to poke fun at our stereotypes because at the end of the day if we don't someone else will and, and, and then we'll get offended. The show was even mentioned in a cable released by WikiLeaks. Apparently American diplomats felt it reflected negative stereotypes about the US. Now after six seasons and 90 episodes Little Mosque is getting ready to wrap up both its storylines and its legacy. They've got a two-part series finale. So will Ryan and Amar have a baby? I don't have time for this. I'll talk to you when I get home from work. Will the fine folks of Mercy live together happily ever after? But more importantly, how has Little Mosque altered the TV landscape in both Canada and elsewhere? Please welcome to the show our friend Zabe Shake and Satara Hewitt. Thank you, man. How are you? Good, thank you. Hi. Lovely to see you. You too. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This is amazing. I was just the saying. Oprah treatment, it's right? the Oprah treatment, right? We're getting wow, the Oprah yeah. treatment here. It's so cool. Listen, um, you guys, obviously, it's a show that had a huge impact on this network and helped change the direction of this network in a really positive way. Um, it it kind of jump-started it. So congratulations on a hell of a run. That's something. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so thank you so much. That's very, right. You too, man. It's, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, it really was a... I think it jump-started a lot of great things in this country um, for Muslims, for non-Muslims, for the television industry, for CBC. So I think it's really, it's a feel-good show, so it's, it's been fun. Yeah, it's sort of nice when the, um, the underdog, so to speak, gets right. to the top in so many ways. And, and um, Canadians are often seen as our shows are sort of marginalized, and it was nice to be a part of this. And then all these other great shows came after us on CBC. And, so, what, so okay, so when do you have a chance now to reflect? Because in one's career, you try not to reflect too much, but <laughs> no you, you have to, yeah, <laughs> you have to now, in a sense. I mean, so as the show comes to an end, I mean, why do you think it worked? Um, first of all, I think it was um, the fact that this was a question. A lot of people were asking a lot of questions about Islam, of Muslims. A lot of um, people wanted to know. There was a lot of fear. Um, curiosity, because obviously, because of the horrible uh, tragedies of 9-11. Um, but in this country, I think people were asking, kind of going, hey, Muslims aren't, we don't know that kind of Muslim that we see. And I think, you know, it all happened, clicked together nicely. You are representative in a way of a part of the culture. So there's things you can't do because people are just going to see you in public and go, hey, wait a minute. Uh, why yeah. is the, why is the, the guy at the mosque drinking in a bar? Like, what, all that stuff, you can't do that stuff, yeah. right? Well, you're right. We're representatives of an entire culture, a culture that's actually been quite uh, uh, looked at in a completely negative light for a long time in the media. So when there's, and they're so closed in. So the fact that the show, the fact that we're even laughing about Islam was yeah. potentially very dangerous. Right. So when you've got to play a part that you know is in a mom or a woman who's in a hijab, yeah. who's really a, a, a staunch Muslim yeah. in that way. And you sort of it's become part scary. of something that's so much bigger than you. And you you didn't essentially sign up for it in the first place. You said I'm going to be an actor, and then suddenly you are representing an entire culture. Let's, let's start with what the very beginning of the show, and, and let's bring out the creator of the program. Please welcome to the program Zarka Nawaz. Nice to see you. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Of course, have a seat. I mean, I can imagine, right, that you'd be surprised that this whole thing turned out the way it did. I don't think anyone knew. No one knew. I think it was, we were all so innocent. And, you know, we were starting to realize when all this press 
particularly from the U.S., started, started paying attention. And we're like the New York Times, CNN, what's going on? And the Canadian press started taking notice, going, why is the American press yeah. paying attention? And I think that, you know, at first I think that people were actually worried, right, because the Danish cartoons had happened, and people were like, wow, is, is, you know, is the Muslim community going to go crazy and flip cars in Toronto and burn down the CBC? Like, what's happening? What are they doing? You know, because let's face it, you know, when you do the first sitcom about Muslims, we didn't start with a, a couch in a living room. We started off with a comedy in a mosque right. about Islam. I mean, you, you know, you couldn't have gotten more edgier. And it's, that just... It's, it's like it's historically well. considered the most fun of all the religions, <laughs> right? You know, it's like on par with, you know, some of the... Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> some of the Christian crusaders' lack of humor historically, right? Right. So were, were you nervous about uh, being um, sensitive? To, to we, knew, we knew we were always going to be sensitive. It was just well, how could we make it really funny? Yeah. And so my my thing was how do I mine all this stuff from my childhood and growing up and make it into this really hilarious show? Well, let's play a clip here. Let's watch this clip here. From, this is the beginnings of the story, perhaps. I suggest you be very, very careful. Why? Why are you worried about this? You're going to make a lot of enemies. Why? You know how it is. Why would it upset Muslims for me to show that Muslims are not really acting like proper Muslims because? Because any negative me we get, you know how much of a problem it is, especially if it comes from a Muslim. That's even worse. That's your brother Dutch, right? Yeah. Uh, so that, t t tell us what that is. I was making a documentary called Me in the Mosque, and it was about um, the obsession of, of separation and segregation between the sexes. And that a lot of times when we get imams, you know, coming from overseas, they bring a lot of their cultural baggage and they impose it on the indigenous population and that causes conflict. And so the idea of an imam that was born and raised in Canada um, coming into a mosque, I go, how would that change the dynamic of the community? He would be more sensitive to the needs of women and young people. And that's where the idea of the show came from. Well, her character is a strong character in the storyline, right? Yeah, and as are so many you know, Muslim women living in Canada and the States and all over the world. And it was nice to be able to be a part of that. Yeah, I guess people have preconceived, people who aren't Islamic have a preconceived notion often of what it is. Mm -hmm. And they don't really, what did you feel when you read WikiLeaks? You know, the whole WikiLeaks thing come out, and it was like <laughs> your show was spreading anti-American stuff. I thought maybe. Oh, yeah, that was the one where they were crossing the border and yeah. the Americans were feeling that we were maligning them. I just thought it was hilarious that they would take a comedy like us yeah. and feel that they're being maligned, you know, on Little Mosque. Like, obviously, Prairie. and you could even tell from the, the, <laughs> the Canadian remark that you were like, has, has any, uh, have any of you seen the show? Because <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you're discussing this on a sort of. news out there is is so it maligns so many different ethnicities and people right. you know purposely so it's kind of funny that comedy could rival you know certain types of news programs I heard you guys sent a copy of the episode to Hillary Clinton you sent it to the White House right yeah and I think she sent a letter back when well, you guys are doing amazing work we're proud of you yeah, so I was like it. wow that's fantastic yeah. we're gonna take a break when we come back we're gonna get joined uh, uh, by other members of the Little Mosque cast including Sheila McCarthy and Minaj Sood Little Mosque continues next <laughs> Oh, God, we'll do that again. Yeah. Employees do your work for you. Friends give advice. Fair enough. Ten bucks ought to cover it. Do you have change for a hundred? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Thank you back here. As Little Mosque on the Prairies, uh, series comes to a finale. We want to celebrate the show as we should. Please welcome a couple other members from the program. Sheila McCarthy, Menarsu. How are you? Great. Nice Thank you. you. Well, nice to see you, man. Welcome. So congratulations on a hell of a run. Thank you. Right. We've relegated the two stars to no, the back. I'm kind of feeling like, <laughs> no, I feel like the visible minority. <laughs> wow. Who let the white girl in? I, I don't know how I got this part. That's the amazing. Yeah. You didn't, now, when you first got this, you didn't think this was going to go, did you? No. No, oh, I really? no, no. I thought it was a really funny script. I had no idea, but, and I thought, wow, can I move to Regina? That's move my whole family. You know, I was worried about those things. Right. I was worried about, you know, uh, I was. I don't think anyone could be more surprised than, than me. Thank I, I, CBC thought it was going to be. I loved, no, I loved it. Yeah. Um, uh, but it had nothing to do with the political ramifications of the show. It just right. I wasn't sure that you know. 
is going to find his place. Yeah. Hang out yeah. with all of us. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like, uh, you know, yeah. the guy, you know, raised Hindu playing the most of a Muslim on the show? <laughs> well, my, my father always jokes about that, and he says that uh, the only thing that would be funnier is if I was Jewish playing a Muslim. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, he's from India, obviously. But right. um, I, I think it's great. I mean, even Zarka, um, Zarka and I just turned out new somebody before the show through a little connection. And even she said to me that, you know, if he thinks it's really great, we have a Hindu playing yeah. um, a Muslim because that, that this is what we have. This show is supposed to be about tolerance and such. So, mm. Well, I mean, no one knows who's what on the show anyway, right? right. Yeah. You know, people yeah. are always yeah. asking me which of the actors are Muslim, and they're like, you know, is it hard for Arlene to get jobs dressed like that? I'm like, she doesn't dress like that. She's like <laughs> yeah. Jamaican-Canadian. Like, That's right. And people are surprised. Even my mother's bridge club thought I was turning Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> she converting from Catholicism she now convert. to becoming a Muslim. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really seriously, and because yeah. no one can tell who's what, it kind of yeah. shows that does it really matter? How do I get back in here? Of course, my mother... It really sort of shows it doesn't really matter who's what, who of plays what, who believes said, what. My mother said when she saw the show, she went, well, how could they cast such a beautiful girl to be your daughter? So not Dear your God, daughter. Mom. Thank and you my, so much for that compliment. My family was like, how what did you, you get a job working with an actual movie star? Like, you're, really, you're not really that much of an actor. Well, so here's the her. thing. So herein lies the, the rub for you, you. You hope in your career you get an ensemble like this. You get to work with people like this. And so when it comes to an end, you, uh, you know, you know it's coming to an end. Yep. Did that change the dynamic as oh, you guys sure. were working? The last yeah. season. You didn't get the email, did you? We didn't get renewed. No, we didn't get renewed. Sarah, I got a spin-off, okay. though. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't do that. <laughs> oh, it was a, that's why this last season was golden for us, because we were so grateful every show. We, were, we, we knew how lucky we were. I mean, Deb and I could barely get through scenes a lot of the time, as you just witnessed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, we, they were paying us, you know, to see me right through menopause. It was brilliant. <laughs> That's brilliant. Why she's the funny one, right? <laughs> what was the thing, the thing that so resonated grateful. with you the most that someone said to you on the street, a Canadian identified you and said, hey, here's what the show means to me? Well, I was walking, this is in after season two, I was walking back to my hotel just down the street and a man came up to me and he was from Pakistan or India. And he goes, I know you. And I kind of innocently said, no, I don't think so. And then he goes, no, no, no. He said, um, I know you. And then he got on his knees and he kissed my hand. And I felt very embarrassed. And he said that he had just moved to Canada six months or a year ago. And he felt, him and his family felt like real outsiders here. Then all of a sudden they turn on the TV and there's a show about their culture. And then he asked me what mosque I go to. And I go, well, I'm not a Muslim. And he was, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and he ran away. <laughs> You're the only other one in the day, you two who can make that joke, right? I'm not so near that one. Wow. You probably make that joke, wow. the set just clears, and everyone ducks, so I'm like, yeah. uh, that, Well, that's, that shows you how big yeah. a deal. Did you ever feel like an outsider growing up? Oh, yeah, I mean, I grew up in Calgary at a time when um, there were no other visible minorities at, uh, at the school I went to. Really? You were so, the only brown guy at the school? Pretty much. There was one other wow. kid, and I think he got teased almost as much as me. Yeah. Really? Did it? Did it go to a place of anger for you? How did you deal with it? The way I dealt with it was I internalized everything and I never spoke about it. And my parents would say, how are you? You know, what's happening at school? And I go, oh, it's fine. And I never told a soul about it. Aww. Yeah. So we, we talked about the WikiLeaks scandal. Then this, after all this has gone on, then the study comes out um, this week that says like, in the neighborhood of half uh, Canadians uh, distrust Muslims. And uh, in, in that group, a lot of them think it's the Muslims' fault. So this is still where we're at. How does that make you feel? Well, we have a lot of work to do, right? And so I just feel like I can't go to that negative place. And to me, it's, you know, we work with one person at a time. And so I feel the show was, you know, the show was a part of making things better. I think it's really important for whatever culture you are. Canada, you have to take advantage and of the opportunities that a country like Canada gives you and really make something of yourself in a way that you can be articulating for uh, your group, whatever that is, whether it's mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, if you feel in a minority place, whether it's gender or it's sexual orientation or whether it's color or creed, you know, it's important for us to get into places where we can speak of ourselves and our people that we know. Mm -hmm. So huge pressure on any series is what you do with the season finale and the series finale. That's a major thing. Does everybody go to jail like Seinfeld? <laughs> Does no one know what happened like The Sopranos? Do you wake up with a previous partner like Newhart? What happens <laughs> oh, when you... It when was you... perfect what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It was a watch. perfect full circle. You, you don't want to give it away, no, no. but was there pressure to get this right? Were you all fighting no. for what this, how this character goes out? You know, what we had not... What the, writer, the writer's room came up with will just satisfy every audience member, I think. So it's not enough to close the show up one episode, it had to be a two-parter? Do you, do you even get the to be continued at the end of the first one? Do you have that big TV moment? Yeah. 
Yeah. I think so. We're not yes. part of that. Yeah. They don't, they don't tell us those Ooh, things. That's how secret this is. I know. Two-part finale, Little Moscow and the Prairie. So it happens Monday, March 26th at 8.30 on CBC. And, of course, Monday, April the 2nd as well right here. We'll be right back.